Every time there is a major drug importation, Tony, someone seems to point the finger at you. So you've got a bad reputation around town. The people that you surround yourself with, Carl, for example, you've got a PR problem. You call me a dog? Mate, if I was a dog, you'd be long gone. When's this bloody war gonna end, hey? When? When they end! He was calm. Don't you make an enemy out of him. Tell that stupid husband he was enough. Enough! March 19, 2006 was a Sunday. At 5pm, Tony Mockbell did what he'd done religiously for several years. He reported to a police station in accordance with his bail conditions. Hey, uh, babe, I'm going to walk. Why don't you, uh, why don't you take the car? You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just feel like we're walking. OK. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. As long as he was tucked up safe in bed by eight and didn't leave home till seven the next morning, everything was sweet. But this Sunday, things were different. The odds were stacking up against him. He was pretty sure he was looking at jail time over the Federal Police Mexican cocaine case, and he was feeling the heat. At 5.30 that quiet Sunday afternoon, Fat Tony turned his back on his family, his girlfriend, on the world he knew, took a step to the left, and went on the run. Police report. Drug squad intel. We're all in there. Me, Carl, Hordy, even you. Hey, yeah, look, that's me. Yeah, all because of one bloody dog. Terence Hodson. Shit. Jesus, where'd you get this? I slipped under my door. Half of Melbourne's got it by now. What are we going to do? Oh, I know what I'd like to do to Terry bloody Hodson. Listen, warn the boys, all right? Tell them to steer clear of the prick. You're still painting your face. Don't you do anything else? Ah, oh, blow me. You know, bugger this. All right. Come on, we're going to talk to this prick. <laughs> you dog. Tony, you, you got it wrong, mate. You stay away from me. My family, my friends, everyone. Do you understand me? If you had any decency, you'd put a gun to the side of your head and pull the trigger. <laughs> Tony, come on, mate. Who else has seen this? You've dogged a lot of good people, Dad. Some of them friends of mine. Mine came through the office fax. How'd you get yours? Someone slipped it under the bloody front door. Jeez, you fucked one goat. Well, Hudson screwed the whole bloody herd. <laughs> I'm Zara Gad Wilson. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're Carl's lawyer. Yeah, I've been tracking you. Have you? Mm. Tony had been in an arm wrestle with the feds over the Mexican coke case since 2001. His strategy was simple. Outlast the buggers. Yeah, if you went to trial tomorrow, you'd lose. Are you saying I'm wasting my money with my legal team? Oh, mine's a latte. No, it's not. Solid witnesses, taped evidence, plus it's a federal case. I mean, pound for pound, they're better resourced than Vic Police. And they don't tend to fuck up like Victoria Police do. 
like you're in a confidence game with the crowd. They don't want to contest your hearing, it's expensive. They want to play even in the same as the discounts. Challenge them. They want to play even in the same as the discounts. Challenge them. Where's the world? Where's the world? Remembering things differently in the same scale. You're in a confidence game with the crown. They don't want a contested hearing, it's expensive. Tony, are you listening to me? <laughs> you know that lawyer of Carl's? What's her name? Zara? Yeah. Well, if you haven't already, you're going to think about fucking her. What? I can smell another woman a mile off. You're imagining things, babe. You. I'm going to be strong. Strong. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I'll be strong. Inside? No, just got here. Dad said he'd ring me. Mom? Dad? Andy? Andy! Gunman? Gunmen, make them kneel, bang, bang. <sighs> Must have been relaxed. You're his killer. There'd be a whole phone book of people who'd like to see Terry Hodson dead. Start with the kids? Then we'll look at who stood to benefit most. Sergeant Paul Dale. So obviously Terry Hodson can't give evidence against you regarding the drug house robbery. So I'm a person of interest, am I? Well, we all movements Saturday night and Sunday morning. I was in Bendigo with some friends. We just went to a few pubs there. And your friends can verify that? Yeah, sure. I'll give you their names. Please. So you do realise that you're going to need to speak to everybody who's named in that blue file? I've been investigating homicide for 20 years, Paul. Carl Williams, Tony Mockbell, Malad Mockbell, Horty Mockbell. Hey, hey. Okay. They shot his wife. Yeah. The kids found them. Why would anyone do that? Yeah, well, why would anyone murder a registered informant? I mean, shit, that's like taking the whole Victorian police force. Just hope she didn't know what was going to happen. I reckon they'll go after Paul Dahl for it. Why? Because he's up on burglary charges. Yeah, well, well Terry dogged him. Now, Terry's out of the way. He's off the hook. Should we get married? Hmm? Sorry, I don't even know why I asked that. It's emotional. This kind of stuff, you know. Mind you, what's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't sleep with dogs. <laughs> oh, babe, yeah. I'm yeah. already married, you know that. We don't need a ring to prove that we love each other. Huh? Do we? Maybe. This is a fax copy of 
Terry Hodson's leaked blue file. You ever seen that before today? No. Oh, I mean, I heard he was dogging his mates, but, um, yeah, that's only from what I read in the paper. You got an office in Sydney Road? Yep. You got a photocopier, fax machine in the office? Yeah, of course I do. Look, I don't even know why you're talking to me. I hardly know Terry. Everyone in that file had a reason to kill Terry. Your name's on the list. That makes you a person of interest. Prove to me you're not a suspect. Listen, what would I gain by killing Terry, huh? You got informants testifying against you on cocaine importation charges at the moment. Now, killing Terry would certainly send a message to them, wouldn't it? And other informants. I'm a peace-loving person, detective. I don't go in for that sort of stuff. Well, what do you think was going to happen? Terry was a dog. Well, his wife too? Yeah, well, that was uncalled for. Look, this is good for all of us. It's a lesson to all the dogs out there and anyone else that stands in our way. Well, who the fuck is left? You may not have noticed, Tony, but we're at war. You were at war, Carl. Not me. Look, the horses have jumped, mate. They're running until they get to the finish line. There's nothing I can do about it. Size nine, yeah? Things are hotting up, Tone. Especially around Carl and these killings. I can't do this anymore. You're ending it? You're too close to Carl. This is our last time. Too many eyes on us since the Hudson murders. You know what, I tip my hat to you for doing it face to face, but you don't get to end it. It ends with I say. This is like a marriage, just without the divorce part. Now, what else you got? Nothing. I haven't heard a peep about you. Carl Williams was the big issue. The loosest of loose cannons. He could destroy Mockbell Inc. with a single shot. The question for Tony, what could he do to stop him? planning to dog Carl. It needs to be done then. It's fucking ruining everything. Don't even think about it. Don't. Police informant Terry Hodson was a boots and all challenge to law and order. Every copper in the state felt the pressure. Bring Terry Hodson's killer to justice. Shut down the gangland war. Dismantle Melbourne's illegal drug industry that fueled everything. So the problem is Carl. Right. Got to get him off the streets. Yeah. Do you know Mario Candela? Hey. Mario Candela, do you know him? Candela, yeah, yeah, he's um, he's a man of mixed time crew. Well, Carl's hired a couple of blokes to knock him off. You're kidding me. Are you guys gonna pick him up? Yeah, well, that's the plan. Bugger me. Hey, buddy. How come you been avoiding me, you prick? I haven't been avoiding you, mate. You've been avoiding me. What are you talking about? Guess what? Mum's doing a famous apricot chicken for Sunday lunch. And you ain't lived till you've tasted Mum's apricot chicken. Is that an invite, is it, mate? Save me a seat, Carl. <laughs> I look forward to it, mate. See you, Tony. See you then. 
Don't often see you in this part of the world, Tony. Oh, when Carl told me you were doing the apricot chicken, I just knew I had to be here. Mum's apricot chicken is the best. So what's the occasion? Since we're all here together, hmm? there's something we want to tell you. Isn't there, Carl? We're separating. Trial separation. I'm sorry to hear that. We've just been at each other a lot lately and we think it's the best thing, you know, for the kids. If there's anything you guys need, right, you know, anything, you let me know. Thanks, Tone. Of course. Nothing much is going to change. Carl will have his apartment in town, but he'll still be there for all his parental obligations. Won't you, babe? Oh, well. Life goes on. Carl, scummy here for you. Great meal, Mum. Hey, yeah, what do you want? I'm Detective Senior Sergeant Charlie Bazina from Homicide. Carl Williams, I have a warrant for your arrest. A conspiracy to murder Mario Condello. Step outside and I'll caution you. Mario Condello's not even dead yet. Fuck! Call Zara for me? Yeah, of course, mate. Conspiracy to murder was just the beginning. As well as major drug charges, Police Task Force Piranha quickly added the Michael Marshall murder to Carl's rap sheet. Well, Carl's my best friend, all right? So if he needs anything, all right? You know, like your fees, if he needs help with that. I'll pay him. Wonderful to have friends. Completely cute. I hear your committal date's been set. Should have switched to me. And those nasty feds asked for a million dollar bail. In fact, those nasty feds, led by Jared Ragg, were proving to be tougher opponents than Tony anticipated. The feds are wasting taxpayers' dollars for three pissy kilos? Tony, in a lot of people's language, three kilos is a lot of cocaine. Yeah. Now, let's get real. You've got Scrooge's statement against you. You've got Billy Fisher's evidence. I think we can probably expect to see some jail time at the end of this. I'm not going back to jail. No way. That's what I'm paying you blokes for, to keep me out. Tony, have you been committed to trial? You're still flying around free as a bird. I'd say we're doing OK. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> see you, love. Yeah, Bertie, this is for you, darling. Oh, no, Tony, I can't. Come on, don't be silly. Just take it. You're a Carl family to me, all right? It's for the kids. School fees. I don't have to worry about that shit. Why aren't there more good blokes like you, huh? Then I wouldn't be special. Come here. Thank you. Hey, listen, when you see that fat husband of yours, tell him it's a bogan. Yeah. Like he's in my heart. Yeah, go stuff yourself, huh? <laughs> and you can't Oh, She's so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's so dark. Think of my eyes. You okay, Ben? I set a date for the committal hearing on that uh, Mexican cake chart. It's ridiculous, Tony. Yeah. Feds are asking for some shitload of bail, aren't they? Yep. A million bucks. A million? <sighs> Where are we going to get that from? Oh, obviously, I'd use this house as a surety. But a car, it's been restrained. Well, isn't ours worth more than that, Dale? Well, yeah, yeah, it is. But you know. what? <laughs> it's for the family. Let's put the bloody house up. Yeah, but, you know, it's it's under your name only. That's the thing, babe. It's got to be your decision. It's for the family. <laughs> Don't I? You're a sweetheart. <laughs> Not a question. Not a bloody question. I find the plaintiff has a case to answer. If properly instructed, I'm satisfied that a jury could return a guilty verdict. Surety is set at $1 million against Renee Mockbell. That is all. <sighs> hey, thank you again. Thank you, lady. I know where to find you. <laughs> Thank you.
Everything that you have told me, it checks out. In fact, I have double checked every detail. All right? Now, yes, you have a serious criminal record, but that is irrelevant to the court because I can prove that your statement about Mock Belt and the Mexican drug operation to be true. All right? There comes a time when every man has to stand up and tell the truth, regardless of the risks. Welcome to the new Piranha Task Force, Piranha 2. Some of you did time with Piranha 1, Drug Squad, Homicide and Asset Acquisition. Now, if any of you have got an ego, leave it at the door. I don't care about any egos, I don't want any pissing competitions. Don't get in one with him. You got something you want to add, Detective Sergeant? Just saying from personal experience, don't get into a pissing competition with you, boss. Correct. Good advice. Now, for the Tony Mockbells of the world, this will be the worst time of his life. So from now on, we're going to do things very differently. We're not going to pick them off one at a time. We're going to be strategic. Grab intel on all the players and all their operations. We put the whole jigsaw puzzle together. Once we've done that, we take them down simultaneously. So three words, folks. Identify, investigate and dismantle. We're going to cut Tony Mockbell off at the knees. Jim O'Brien's heading up Piranha 2. Yeah? Good. No, it's not good, Tony. Yeah, so from now on, any operations against you or your brothers will be run from inside Piranha 2, not MDID. And I'm out of the loop. So join Piranha 2? Yeah, it's invite only, Tony. What, they ain't got room for a girl from Tasmania? Tony, the world's changing. This is going to be a game changer. He's coming after anyone with the name Mockbell. Hey, Angie. Those two on the floor. What do we know about him? Bruce and Phil. Big one's Bruce. Well, who do they work for? No one. Yeah, just what you know. Guys who aren't on anyone's radar. Invisible. Turn the roll on you in a heartbeat. Listen, we're going to change the way we do things, all right? We don't. We're gone. Boys, listen, I need, I need two men that I can trust. <laughs> Are you serious? There's a better risk. But I'll tell you what, boys. There's a shitload of profit to be made in this. How do you know we won't rip you off? Let's stop you ripping us off. You have my word. Jesus, I thought I was doing you blokes a favour. Listen, this is about mutual trust, all right? This business, mutual trust. That's it. See, so yeah, the trick is, right, always stay at least once removed and never, never let anyone know the full picture. All right? Joe and Nick, they don't know you're dealing with Diane Fabio. Diane Fabio don't know you're getting it from Horty or Mill or whoever it happens to be at the time. All right? That way, a car gets pulled from the card house, the house remains standing. Can we call ourselves the company? Sure. As long as you run it like a company. I just can't believe you gave the keys to the kingdom to that pair of dumb dickheads. Oh, they're, they're proxies. Is that a word? The word is dickheads. You're either a criminal genius, Mr Mockbell, or a dickhead yourself. Something, something is different. I will guess. You've had your tits done. Oh, you had them reduced. Oh, I dreamed about those puppies. Yeah, well, I can love them, all right? <laughs> Come in. Come here. You've already spent too long away. I need a glass for you, the lady. I need that. Mm. The scars will fade. Yeah? Mm, mine did. Mm. These done 12 months ago. Mm. From a D to a double D. Oh, shit, we do for men, eh? <laughs> no, I didn't do this for anyone but myself. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? 
Tony likes big tits. I give him big tits. <laughs> he goes and fucks up. Bitch. What? You. You're a bitch! Hey, hey, hey. Danny, bitch. Danny, stop it! What, what are you doing? Bitch! Sorry. What? Never touched her. Why? Baby, never touched her. Bullshit me. She's Carl's lawyer, a direct lie to him. Oh, so you're fucking her because of him. You will fucking say anything. Carl knows my business inside and out. If the cops go to him for a deal, who knows what shit he's gonna say to get out of it. She will be the one advising him. <laughs> So because you're fucking her, she'll tell him to say no. Yes, exactly. You are a lying sack of shit. Fuck you. Piss off. Don't you give me that. You want bloody loyalty, but just screw us all over. You know, that is why people roll on you. Get out of the way. And if Carl does, it's because you bloody well deserve it. Get out of the way. Fuck you. Screw you, Tony. Wish I had bloody shagger. You bloody shit. Tony, I made your cup of tea. It's very nice. It's got five sugars. Because you're hurting. I'm not hurting, Mum. Told you. All right, you know what? I'm glad she moved out. I'm gonna go around there, collect all the rest of her shit, and chuck it all down the street. That's what I'm gonna do. Maybe you go back to Karma, huh? You kidding? No, it's over. But you know, the, the people grow apart. She's my mate. That's it. All right? We've got to be. Because, you know, because the kids and that. Family always comes first, Tony. Your father always put family first before everything. I know that, Mum. I'll never let this family down, OK? I promise you that. Follow your heart. Maybe Denise stop falling in love with you because you're too fat. Mum, Danielle, OK? Danielle is her name. How many times have I got to tell you? OK, I'll make you a sandwich. All right. So when you say the accused, Mr. Mockbell, paid for the importation, how much did he pay for? All of it. He put all the money up. For the cocaine, uh, money to buy the tickets to Mexico, hotel, living expenses. Would it be fair to say that he was the financier? Yeah, he paid for everything. Gave the orders. What Tony said when. The big man's testimony, together with police informant Billy Fisher's covert recordings, were enough for a guilty verdict. And Tony knew it. Tony? We're doing court, detective. We need to have a follow-up chat. Look, I told you everything. All right? Billy knew Terry Olson. I believe he counted you as a friend. Bloody dog. Now, if you're prepared to lie about something like that, what other lies are you telling me, Tony? Hey, you know who it is. Leave your number and I'll call you right back. Ciao now. Hi, babe, it's me. Let's stop being silly, eh? Come on. Oh, a man can be an idiot sometimes, you know? Come on. So I need to go statements about the jobs he did for Carl. Uh, look at the last one. 
He says Carl told him to kill Michael Marshall, but for me, that I paid for it. Well, did you? No, of course not. Well, then why would Johnny say it? Because he's a fucking nut. He's just trying to get a reduced sentence, that's all. Looks like Carl's bullshit's finally caught up with you. What are you going to do? I don't know. Have you spoken to Zara? I've only told you. I'd ask Zara. She's Carl's lawyer. She's going to have some ideas. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was such an asshole. No, no, just, no, no, just, you know, I'll give you 110%, Tony. And I don't get that back. I love you, you schmuck. I can't help it, but you just make it so difficult. I know I did, babe. I'm sorry. Babe? I got you a present. It's from Brazil. Tony there? Yeah. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? I'm on the treadmill. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, what are my options then, hmm? Run? I'm certainly not going to advise you to do that. Well, what are my options, though? They haven't even charged you. Yet. Look, today's statement was pretty bloody clear. You must have known about it for months. Why didn't you warn me? Tony, I'm not going to talk about well, it. I know it's privileged, right? Bloody privileged. Well, what about my privileges? I'll ignore that. Johnny's statement alone isn't enough to bring charges against you. You know, the police would have to corroborate it. They'll just word someone else up, like, 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 like Carl. Is he talking to him? I wouldn't even answer that if I could. But you'd tell me if he was, right? They don't bail you for murder, Zara. I'll be fighting this from inside a jail cell. I sure as shit won't be playing the fucking stalling game then. Jared Ragg had been chasing Tony Mockbell almost as long as me. He knew all his moods, all his moves. Call it a copper's instinct, but Jared sure as hell knew when something felt wrong. The uh, Crown Prosecutor, please. Before we bring the jury in, I have a point of business. The Crown has an application for amendment of Mr Mockbell's bail arrangements. The Crown will speak. Your Honour, as we're now at closing arguments, the Crown asks the court the defendant be remanded in custody for the remainder of the trial. Our reasons being the severity of the crime Mr Mockbell is charged with means he faces a significant prison sentence. He has the means to abscond should he take it upon himself to do so, and to that end, a network of criminal associates to aid and abet him. Mr. Heliotis, is there anything you wish to say? Mr. Mockbell has demonstrated stringent adherence to his bail conditions for over 12 months now. He has done nothing to indicate a change to that behaviour. Revoking his bail is completely unjustified. Mr. Crown, is there anything concrete you wish to put in support of the application? No, Your Honour. I see no reason to change Mr. Mockbell's current arrangements. His bail conditions stand. Um, bring the jury in. We'll continue closing arguments then. Nice car. Thanks. <laughs> What's up, boss? Listen, boys, I'm gonna go away for a while. What, the Mexican Coke thing? Yeah, no, you'll beat that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Either way, I'm not gonna be here. How long? Who knows? Remember that conversation we had about trust? Yeah. 
Well, I need you two to step up. From now on, you're gonna run things for me. All of it. Okay? And don't fuck it up. What? Tone, you're crazy if you're gonna leave the business with a couple of square head skips. I'll still be running it, but just from the inside. Leave it to us, we're family. It's because you're family, I'm doing this. Guys, bloody jacks are all over us, right? We're not careful, we're all gonna end up inside. We need these guys to, to do the shit work, right? To do the heavy lifting. Yeah, well, how set up are they? They're set up. Now, they're gonna look after distribution, but you boys get priority. Yeah, how much have we got to pay? Same as always, Hoyty. Well, how many cooks they got? They got enough, right? You don't need to know. You sneaky bastard, Tony. When are you gonna get it? I'm bloody protecting you. If these boys come to you for anything, anything at all, it's me talking. You're gonna run. Don't think I can't see it the way you got it all set up. Come on, give me some credit, eh? Renee's gone out on a limb for you and this is how you're gonna repay him. You run, they lose their house. <laughs> Do the time, Tony. It's eight years, it's nothing. You can pull the guilt trip on me, brother. The truth of the matter is, you just can't stand the fact that I've pulled off shit that you fucking couldn't even dream of. When I wouldn't even have the house without me. And you, without me, where would you be, huh? You'd be fucking nowhere! Everything okay? Who called up his ass? That's what I'm here for. I love it. I know. Honestly. <laughs> hey, uh, everyone. Look, I uh, just wanted to say, um, it's great, you know? Us being here, family. Hey? You're all, uh, you're all, you're all important to me. All of you. Every single one of you. Oh, we love you, Tony. Get on, your brother. <laughs> Look, I want to raise my glass, um, Cab, you know, who can't be with us today. You know, I want to raise a glass to Cab. He's in my heart always. To Gabalan. To Cab. Gabalan. Mum said we can't go to court tomorrow. Your mum's right. Well, you listen to her, okay? Guys. And you take no shit from anyone either. Right. Come on, we better go. Get him a spell. Yeah, why don't you go and dance, boys? Yeah, Mum. Can we, can we dance, mate? No, I'm gonna go away. Then if I'm gonna see you again. And then you should, Mum, shh, 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 listen. It's only a secret, okay? You can't tell anybody, you can't even my brothers. Just, mm. I'll always be with you, Mum. I love you. Hey, babe. Baby, you know I love you, right? Because I know I can be a prick sometimes, you know? I know it. I mean, if I, if I was a woman, I'd, I'd avoid me. <laughs> oh, if you were a woman, you'd cross to the other side of the street to avoid yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> then listen, you know, this trial is like a martial murder thing. Look, whatever happens, just remember that I love you, okay? Don't scare me. Just promise me you'll remember. Uh, babe, I'm gonna walk. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you take the car? You sure? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, just feel like a walk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, Council, where is Mr. Mockbell? We don't have him, Your Honour. <laughs> right, we'll adjourn for an hour. Move! Screw you, rag! So where is he? Betrayed. You turn your back on me? Convicted. I therefore sentence you. Next Sunday. You're on the run. Come on. Tony Mockbell makes the great escape. Hey, you can't stand Australia. No, the only way we can get your hands on a boat. In an incredible mystery. How did Australia's most wanted man... I don't know what happened. ...completely disappear? Gone. Without... A trace. Fat Tony and Co. continues next Sunday, 8.40.